Welcome to this video entitled Moving Deforming Mesh Example in ANSYS Fluent. In this video you will find out how to set up a simple moving deforming mesh case in ANSYS Fluent. The model consists of a 1 meter square box with a 0.1 meter square box in the center, shown as a void on the image on the left. The working fluid is water and the solid box moves within the larger box with a prescribed sinusoidal x velocity. That prescribed sinusoidal velocity has a 20 second period and a 0.05 meter per second amplitude as shown on the graph on the right. Now let's look at the model in ANSYS Workbench. The model was built in Design Modeler, so now let's look at it. The two boxes were built in the XY plane using sketching and a surface was generated from that sketch. Now let's look at the model in ANSYS Mesher. Here's the model already meshed in Mesher. Sizing consisted of proximity and curvature with a relevant center of fine. The all triangles method was used. And then two name selections were generated. Here are the outer walls called walls outer. And here are the inner walls called walls inner. Now let's look at the user defined function or UDF that sets the prescribed motion for the inner box. We'll be using the define CG motion macro and a detailed description of the macro is available in the Fluent UDF manual. Now let's look at the parameters that are passed in the macro. So box is the name of the UDF profile. DT is a pointer that stores the dynamic mesh attributes. VEL is the linear velocity array. Omega is the angular velocity array. Time is the current time and D time is the time step. So the first thing that the macro does is set the linear and angular velocities to zero. And here the x velocity is set by the sinusoidal function. And then vel zero is set to vel x, where vel zero is the x component of the velocity array. And finally, there's a message statement here that just prints out the time and the x component of the velocity. And this is used just for debugging purposes. Now the UDF is compiled using Visual Studio via the SDK command line. And the next thing that has to happen is that the resulting libUDF folder has to be put in the Fluent folder in your Workbench working directory. Find that here, Fluent, copy and paste, and there is your libUDF folder. And now we're ready to launch Fluent. So here's our mesh in Fluent, and the first thing we do is load the UDF like this. The default name is libUDF, so we just click load. And there we have it. You can see box has been loaded. That is the name of the UDF. Now let's start setting up the Fluent case by moving down the tree on the upper left. Click on general, make the problem transient. Now click on models, viscous. We're gonna turn on standard K epsilon as our turbulence model. Click on materials. We're gonna find water liquid in the Fluent materials database going to copy and close it. Now we're going to go to cell zone conditions and choose water as our working fluid. Like so. And now we're going to set up the dynamic mesh. Click on dynamic mesh here. And we're going to check off smoothing and remeshing. Now we click on the settings, go here to remeshing. And here we're going to leave the minimum length scale at zero, and we're going to make the maximum length scale 0.05 meters, so that when the mesh is moved or deformed, the maximum length scale is limited to 0.05 meters. Now let's set up that dynamic mesh zone. The zone name that we want to be moving is walls underscore inner. Here under motion UDF slash profile, um, box has been loaded in already since the lib UDF has been loaded. So now all we have to do is hit create. So now we close. And now we can initialize the solution. And once we initialize, we can preview the mesh motion. Click initialize, click on dynamic mesh, preview mesh motion. So we will do time steps of 0.1 seconds and 200 time steps for a total of 20 seconds of time. So now we hit preview and you can see that as the box moves to the right and then to the left, the remeshing is done automatically. Now let's look at an animation of contours of velocity magnitude as a function of time with the mesh displayed showing the mesh motion and deformation. Thanks so much for watching.